Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the available chamfer tool found in Autodesk Inventor. And if you want more easy to understand and practical content made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, turn on notifications, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everyone, so here we are in our new part file and I went ahead and extruded a rectangular frame structure. So let's pretend we're working up a design concept for a picture frame that we're developing and we want to use the chamfer tool to take off some of the edges here to make the piece a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so first you want to make sure you have your 3D geometry. Now you go to the chamfer tool up in the modify section. Okay, so now we get our dialog box that pops up. Our first tab says chamfer, and this is where it houses all of our variants for the chamfer command, okay? And then we have our partial tab. So all this does is it takes a chamfer. So let's say we uh, took off the edge along the entire length here. If you go to partial, you can actually um, start the chamfer somewhere in the middle or off to one side and end it somewhere out here in the middle and vice versa. So we'll go more into detail on that in just a moment. Let's go back to the first tab. Okay, and let's look at the first variant, which is the distance chamfer. Okay, so to use this, it's pretty simple. You just make sure that's selected by left clicking it there. Okay, now um, our first box is our edge selector box. So we can um, make sure this tool is active by left clicking on that. Okay, now we can hover over an edge and start picking up edges. Now, um, all you have to do is click on an edge to select it. If you wanna deselect it, all you have to do is hold the shift key Okay, hover over that edge and then left click. So holding shift, we hover over the edge and click it, okay? Now, one other thing I wanna discuss before we go uh, too much further is the edge chain option. So we get two options. Basically the first option allows you to select edges that are tangent to one another, okay? So you'll notice that I have uh, two filleted corners here and that's on purpose because uh, by default, our first option is selected, which basically connects tangent edges. And when I hover over any one of these three edges that are tangent to one another, it automatically selects all of them. So you'll see it sort of wraps around there. Okay, now um, the other option is a single edge selection. So if I use that, it gives me a little bit more control over exactly what I'm picking up. So now when I hover over it, it's only picking up the straight segments or the curved segment here in the middle but it's keeping it all separate, okay? So um, that is the uh, two different edge chain options available to us. So let's actually jump out of that and go back into chamfer, okay? We'll make sure that's selected. Now, let's uh, actually take off this fillet here because we no longer need that. And um, going back into our tool, we'll go over to the distance section. So let's say we want to apply a chamfer to all four of these corners. Okay, so we've completed that option and now we can uh, change the distance. Now, regarding the distance, we're not actually looking at um, the length from this cut edge to this cut edge. Okay, the distance is actually measured. So if we square up to this right side here and zoom in, this 0.125 inches is actually measured from this corner here to where the cut ends, to where that chamfer ends, and then the same for this direction. Okay, so the distance chamfer is equidistant in both directions. So just keep that in mind. Now, our final option in here is the setback option. So let's say I wanted to apply a chamfer here. We can control how that setback is handled. So uh, by default, we have a flat corner here. So it's uh, essentially ground down to a flat, or we can select this other option where there's no setback. And it's as if you just milled the corner straight off in each direction. Okay. So we'll revert back to our original uh, shape there, and we can just hold shift and deselect that. And of course, uh, like a lot of other tools in Autodesk Inventor, you can click and drag this brown arrow to increase or decrease the size of your feature, okay? So let's bring it back to uh, 0.125 inches. That looks good to me. Okay, so we'll just hit okay there. Okay, so let's go back into the chamfer tool and let's take a look at the distance and angle 
chamfer. So if we click on this box here, it'll take us into a new data set. Okay. So in our selection box, you'll notice we've gained a face selection option. So basically what we want to do is we want to select a face to measure off the distance from. So if I want to measure the chamfer distance from the top face, for example, we can select the top face and then now we need to select the edge of interest. So let's just select this edge. Okay. Now, by default, it's at a 45 degree angle. So if I were to chamfer this, um, it would be 0.125 inches from this uh, edge here because it's at a 45 degree angle. It's even with both directions. But um, what I can do is I can set a different angle. So I can either type my angle in here, okay? Or I can click and drag this little curved arrow and adjust that angle accordingly, okay? So now I'm controlling my distance still off this edge and I can click and drag that as well to change that distance. But you see how that number in the distance box is changing uh, with respect uh, to the top face and this edge, okay? And so you could actually flip that around if you want, um, just depending on your design intent, you have full control over that. And um, of course we have our edge chain option um, as we've already seen and as well as our setback option, okay? So um, that's essentially how the um, distance and angle chamfer works. Let's go back into chamfer. Okay, go to the bottom option here that says two distances and left click on that. Okay, so first we have our edge selection. So we'll just pick up an edge. Okay, and then now we have our two distances. So you'll notice they're set to two different distances. So our first one is a quarter of an inch and the second one is an eighth of an inch. And you can either type in a value in these boxes to change that or you can click and drag these arrows. Okay, and then once you're done, you can just click apply to apply it and keep moving through this command or you can click OK, which will apply your settings and then close out of the command. So if we hit OK, uh, it'll finish it up there for us. Now let's take a step back and go back into chamfer one more time. And let's do a partial chamfer. So essentially all you have to do is select your chamfer style first. So we'll just select this first one, um, our equidistant one. And let's set this value to 0.125 inches. Select our edge. So we've got our edges there. Now that we have those parameters set up, now you want to go to the partial tab, okay? You don't want to close out of the tool or anything like that. At this point, we can select the edge itself. So if we go um, just hover over the edge, you'll see that we have this little yellow dot. Okay, we can just click anywhere there. And now we have a partial chamfer. So we can control this a few different ways. So of course you have these, uh, so you have these two dots on the edges. That's how it controls our start and end point. So we can just click and drag that and drop that somewhere. I can also set a value. So I can set a value to this to start here. And let's say we want it 0 0.250 from the start. It'll control that for us from the end here. Okay. And then we can also set the chamfer length. So let's say we want that to be two inches. Okay. So it'll set that value for us. Now you'll see this little box down here that says set driven dimension. So essentially what this says is we're controlling these first two dimensions by whatever parameters we're setting. And then the two end option is being driven by those first two parameters. Now we can change this to the start chamfer uh, options as well. So essentially, let's say, for example, we have chamfer as the driven dimension. We um, control the start parameter and the end parameter. So let's say we want it to go a half an inch um, from the end. It automatically drives that chamfer value for us and then so on and so forth, you know, through the other options. So once you've selected your values, you can either click apply or OK. So if we click OK, it'll apply that partial chamfer for us. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation module, where we took a look at the available chamfer tool. I really hope that you found this video to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so that you can continue developing your skills. If you want to stay up to date on content like this, that'll help you reach your goals along your journey. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. And as always, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to learn with me and I'll see you again soon.